This example problem says the structure shown below was designed to support a 30 kN load. It includes a boom AB with a 30 by 50 mm rectangular cross section and a rod BC with a circular cross section of 20 mm in diameter. These are connected by a pin at B and are supported by pins and brackets at A and C respectively. And so as you can see here, we have the 30 kN force in the bottom right of the diagram, which acts vertically downwards. And now in part A, we're asked to determine the normal stress in rod BC due to this applied force. And so in the diagram, rod BC is, of course, this diagonal member that runs from point C to point B. And below that is boom AB. But of course, in part A, we're focusing on rod BC. And now to begin, we know that normal stress sigma is simply equal to P over A, where P is the axial load and A is the cross-sectional area of our member. And now, of course, remember that axial load is simply the force that acts along the longitude direction of the member and it is particularly normal to the cross-sectional surface. So for instance, let's consider a cut perpendicular to rod BC. From this cut, we will have a geometry something like this. And so the axial load will be represented by this arrow that is normal to this cross-sectional area. So hence, that is why we get normal stress from this normal force. So now that we've reviewed normal stress, we can now move on with this problem by sketching a free body diagram of our system. And just like in statics, we will use this free body diagram to find all the unknown forces. So starting off here, I will, I will first draw member AB. So here we have just a simple horizontal line representing the boom. And then of course, from the diagram at point A on the left, and at point B on the right, we have pins. So therefore, at point A, we will have a reaction force along the X direction, as well as the Y direction. And then on the right, we simply have the external force of 30 kN. And now from your knowledge of statics, you may have particularly noticed that we have two force members. Since the two members, A, B, and B, C, only have forces acting on their two ends, just like how you can see here in member AB. And now since point B is a pin, technically we do have reaction forces BY and BX, just like at point A. And now to analyze these forces, let's go ahead and focus on just point B. So here I'll go ahead and sketch point B. Of course we have the downward 30 kN force, and then Along member BC, we will have force BC. And of course, since this acts at a diagonal direction, we will need to use a slope triangle in order to resolve this force into its X and Y components. And we can easily solve for the hypotenuse since we have both sides of the triangle. One is 600 millimeters and the other 800 millimeters. And so now I'm just gonna sketch this triangle down here. Of course, we have lengths 800 and 600, and we want to find hypotenuse C. So simply using Pythagorean theorem, we'll have 600 squared plus 800 squared equals C squared. So C is equal to the square root of 600 squared plus 800 squared, which is simply equal to 1000, and that is millimeters. So hence, we have found the length of rod BC which is a thousand millimeters. And now simplifying this triangle, we simply get a three, four, five triangle. So hence that is the relation of our slope triangle, which we can now use to resolve this force into its rectangular components. And of course our coordinate system is just simply X and Y. And remember that this is very important to show in your sketches. And now here on the first sketch above, I'll go ahead and simply replace these reaction forces with force FBC, just like so. 
And so now this completes our free body diagram of boom AB. And we can now simply go ahead and solve for force FBC. And so how do we do this? Well, of course, from statics, we want to analyze our system under equilibrium, since of course, this means the system is stable. So we'll just simply apply equilibrium equations to solve for force BC. And now if you notice here, we cannot start by using some of forces in the x direction or the y direction, since we have breaking down FBC into its x and y components, a total of four unknown forces. So in this case, we can simply use the sum of moments about a point. And now which point do we want to take the moments from? Well, here we want to find force BC, which acts at point B. So I'll go ahead and take my moments starting from point A. And I'll assume counterclockwise as the positive direction. And remember that for an XY coordinate system, we take moments around the Z direction. So the equation will be the sum of moments at A around Z is equal to zero. And in the free body diagram, I forgot to include the dimensions, which is simply the length 800 millimeters, which I'll write as 0.8 meters. So now that we have the distance on there, we can now begin taking our moments from point A. So of course, starting from point A up to the next force, which is the 30 kilonewton force at point B, we get a clockwise moment. And so that is negative. So therefore we'll have negative 30. Remember that moment is equal to force times distance. So this is the negative 30 kilonewtons times the distance of 0 0.8 meters. So that'll be the moment that we get from the 30 kilonewton force. And now if we break down force BC into its Y components, we will basically have a force in the positive Y direction, just like so. And so taking the moment from A to that force, this time we get a counterclockwise moment, which is positive. So hence, adding this to our equation, we'll have plus the force FBCY times the distance. So of course here we wanna define our force FBCY and that is basically equal to FBC times the vertical side of the triangle over the hypotenuse. So that is FBC times 3 fifths and then times the distance 0.8 meters. So that completes our moment balance equation. And we can now simply solve for FBC. So simplifying this equation, we get negative 24 kilonewton meters plus FBC times 3 fifths times 0.8 is 0.48 equals zero. And now solving for FBC, adding the 24 kilonewton meters to the right side and then dividing by the 0.48 meters. The meters cancel out, so we are left with kilonewtons as we expect, which from 24 divided by 0.48, we get 50 kilonewtons. So that is force BC. So now that we finally know force FBC, we can now solve for the normal stress at rod BC, where normal stress sigma BC is equal to, again, normal stress is the axial load over the cross-sectional area. So we can think of the axial load here as being force BC as it acts along rod BC. So therefore, sigma BC will be equal to that force BC over the cross-sectional area of rod BC. And so here we want to find that cross-sectional area. So keeping in mind that this is a circular rod, the area of this cross section, if we were to cut this rod perpendicularly, we would be looking at essentially a cross section of a circle. And as the problem statement tells us, it has a circular cross section of 20 millimeters in diameter. So therefore, since we are looking at a circular cross section, 
our area is just simply the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. And this is equivalent to pi over 4 times d squared, where d is diameter. So hence, the cross-sectional area BC is equal to pi over 4 times the 20 millimeters squared. So sigma BC will be equal to the 50 kilonewtons of force BC over this cross-sectional area, pi over 4 times 20 millimeters squared. Now notice here we're using millimeters in our diameter. So for the purpose of units, I'll go ahead and convert the kilonewtons to newtons by multiplying 10 to the power of 3. That way we can simply get megapascals. So 50,000 divided by 20 squared pi over 4 is roughly 159.15. And again, that'll be in megapascals since remember that newtons over millimeter squared is megapascals. So hence our normal stress at rod BC sigma BC is equal to roughly 159.15 megapascals. So this concludes part A of the problem. So now moving on to part B. Assuming the allowable stress of the material of rod BC is 150 megapascals, determine whether rod BC is capable of safely supporting the rod. And if not, suggest one way that design can be improved to support the load. All right, so we know that the allowable stress of rod BC is 150 megapascals. And so what does this tell us? Well, this basically says that in order for rod BC to be safe from yielding, or in other words, failing, it can only sustain a maximum stress of up to 150 megapascals. So pretty much to be safe, the stress in rod BC needs to be below 150 megapascals. And as you may have noticed already, our stress BC was 159 megapascals, which means that it is over 150. So in our case, this is not good since we are at risk of mechanical failure as sigma BC is greater than sigma allow. So therefore, since the allowable stress is less than the normal stress at rod BC due to the 30 kilonewton load, rod BC cannot safely support the load. So now from the problem statement, if this is the case, then we need to provide a suggestion to improve the design. And so based on our knowledge of mechanics of materials, there are a number of ways to do this. The most obvious one could be just simply using a stronger material with a higher allowable stress, such as one for this case that is greater than 159 megapascals. And so that is one way to do this. But there's also another thing we can do, one that particularly considers the area of our cross section specifically the diameter in this case. Since from our stress formula, we know that increasing the diameter increases the area, which results in a lower stress, since stress and area here are inversely proportional. So therefore, another thing we can do is simply using a larger diameter for our rod. And now to help you understand this, let's say for instance, we wanna aim for a stress of 155 megapascals. Assuming that same force of 50 kilonewtons, we can solve for our diameter d simply using that same stress equation. And so solving for d here, we're just using simple algebra. Here, we can move our denominator to the left side by multiplying pi over 4 times d squared. And so this will become 121.74 d squared and that is equal to the 50 kilonewtons on the right so now dividing the 121.74 to the right side which by the way is essentially in megapascals and so since we have megapascals let's convert the kilonewtons above to newtons so we will be left with d is equal to Simplifying the right side, 
the square root of 410.72, which is roughly equal to 20.27 millimeters. So since our diameter has only shifted by a fraction, and since this was solved for a stress that was still higher than the allowable, we might just need a diameter of more than 20 millimeters.